my Mac setup for coding and the setup that I actually recommend for you going into 2021. Smash that like button so that this video goes out to more developers so they can also build an amazing career because this channel is all about helping you grow as a full-time or a freelance developer and breaking past that six figure mark. Now, there are a lot of tools that you're gonna learn about and there are a lot of new maybe things and workflows that you're gonna learn about that you might not have. It's gonna take some time, but pick them up. They're gonna bring you so much value and increase your productivity as a developer. It'll also allow you to build projects faster, therefore have a better portfolio or perform higher at your job, which allows you to actually make more income. Or if you're a freelancer, make twice the amount of projects and make twice the amount of money. Let's jump right into it. What's up guys? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. I'm going to talk to you about how my Mac is set up for coding. I saw this cool article on daily.dev, which is a great resource for you to go to and click their blog. And it just gives you hot things that are happening. And it made me think, man, my Mac setup is pretty cool. A lot of people ask me, how do I have what I have and how do I use it? So I want to talk about it in this video. I'm going to just start riffing off, pick up whatever you can. I think it's going to be really helpful. So one of the things is for my command line, I use ZSH. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you use this too for pretty much any language you're coding in. ZSH gives you a really amazing environment to so use it. Also get homebrew. It allows you to install things very easily. I think it will also be the thing that allows you to install ZSH homebrew. For any of my web development, I use Chrome because it allows me to use the Chrome inspector tool. So I hope that you're using Chrome as a developer. And that's what I use for doing most of my web development. Highly recommend it because it has a great debugger built in. It allows you to use the console and check what's going on. And, um, you know, if you want to see how something looks in different mobile devices, you can check that too. So use Chrome. Other things I use for my Mac setup is I use Alfred instead of Spotlight. Alfred is just way better, way faster. Learn how to use Alfred. I know we had a team member, Jacob, on our team, a clever programmer, and he didn't know about Alfred, kept fighting with me. He's like, no, this is not good. He had this German accent. We love this guy. And then finally, he gave up and he used Alfred and he's like, I am never going back. Alfred is the best. And I was like, I told you, Jacob, I freaking told you So use Alfred, way faster than Spotlight. It will find your files really fast. It's really helpful for programming as well. For your terminal, don't use the regular terminal. I recommend use iTerm2. It comes in with a lot of smart things like auto suggestions. It comes with the ability to search and find things built into it and a ton of other things, which I can't even remember at the top of my head, but just use iTerm2. I just know that you're gonna be a very happy developer. I use Git, which obviously pretty much every developer uses. And I have a workflow with Git where I have a SSH built in, which then allows me to essentially do my Git commits without having to always ask for my email or password. So it creates this nice workflow where I can do my Git add, Git commit, Git push to origin master where I'm doing, wherever I'm doing it without it needing me to constantly give it my password. So learn how to use the SSH and learn how to make those keys and put them into your Git and have that solid workflow. For my IDEs, when it comes to Python, a lot of the times I will go to PyCharm and it's my main tool and weapon of choice and I just love it and I love how intelligent it is. And whenever I can use PyCharm, I will always use PyCharm. My second option, which is, you know, now, Becoming one of my favorite options also is Visual Studio Code as my IDE. It's really, really good. I want to tell you what my work environment is. So when I'm using Visual Studio Code, I like to use Vim. You know, you can actually use it as an extension, but Vim is this whole other world that if you don't know about, you're going to fall into a rabbit hole. It's the most beautiful thing on the planet. Most developers, I try to convince Nas half the time, like, hey, learn Vim. It's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. You know, but that's whatever. That's just Nas. I recommend and you learn how to use Vim. It's freaking awesome. If you don't get anything else out of it, it's just an amazing rabbit hole to fall down into. And it's just like, what? This is possible? What is this world? And why did nobody ever tell me about this? It's just, you just have these crazy brain explosion after brain explosion. Initially, what will happen is your productivity will go down and you will feel that like that you are the worst developer on the planet. You will become much worse, much slower, much more confused for about three weeks. And on the fourth week, you will 
get as good as you previously were. So you'd be like, that's not that cool. But then week five, six, seven, and eight, two months, three months in, you're just going to smoke your past self. And then it's kind of beautiful, the type of wizardry you can do. And you truly just become a hacker. And it's one of those people, you know, that we watch those Hollywood movies and we go, we want to be like that hacker guy. You will become that hacker guy. Learn Vim. It actually helps speed up your productivity and development and all of that. Tons of other things I use on my Visual Studio Code are prettier, of course, which is, you know, just making sure that uh, when I'm saving stuff, it just formats it really easily. Git lens to be able to do my Git commits in just a much easier way. It kind of, they say it supercharges your code and your uh, Git environment, which it does. So I recommend you use that plugin. Bracket pair colorizer is another one that is very, very helpful, but just make sure your brackets are matching all the time. Live share is a extension I use with Visual Studio Code to make sure that when I'm working with another developer, we can work in the same environment. And this is where I feel that Visual Studio Code really takes the cake. And this is one thing that's really awesome about them. You can even share your local host terminal. You can even share your actual local host that the other developers working with you can actually see the app you're building, and keep, can see the errors in the command line, can get full read and write functionality to your command line. When you guys are writing code together, there's zero lag and you can see each other's names and you guys are building it. It's so freaking cool. I love it. Live share extension on Visual Studio Code. And then other tools that I think that every day, everybody in the modern world should just have are, for example, for communication, Slack is the best for developers. You can write code in it. You can write syntactically highlighted code in it, which is just beautiful. Zoom to communicate with anybody online. Learn Zoom annotations because it allows you to communicate your ideas really well. So as a developer, you could go into Zoom and just circle you know, a block of code or a function and just go, this is the piece of code that I'm talking about. And this piece of code does this other thing that I'm talking about. That's really nice. Use the visual things because especially when you're explaining something to somebody who's not a developer, who's a product manager or somebody else, you want to be able to communicate your ideas with as less words and as many visuals as possible because it makes it so simple. It takes all these complex ideas and turns them into something that is so extremely easy to understand. Other things I use with my Mac setup is Dropler. Incredibly easy for a screenshot, especially as a developer. You want to screenshot, highlight a certain portion of code, hit the save URL. It immediately goes bloop and adds, you know, opens up a new tab. It's already the image is uploaded online. You can take that URL and send it to somebody else. If you want to record your screen and talk about it, you could do it with Dropler as well, though for actually screen recording and explaining your code and explaining what problems you have. For example, maybe you have you're a student who is stuck on a problem. You're trying to explain what's wrong with you. You're trying to ask for help. The best way is make a short video. There's a service called Loom. You hit one button. It just starts recording you and your screen. So you can actually just highlight the part of code you're stuck on, what your problem is. And now whether you're a student or a professional software developer working at a company, and as soon as you hit stop, Loom automatically uploads this video online in like five seconds. You can take that URL and send it to your coworker or send it to your teacher or send it to your friend. They will explain to you exactly when, when they see this video, it's so easy for them to understand what your actual problem was. They can then help you and then you know, give you the right answer or help you move past your problem. Loom is extremely effective. Or if you're employed and you want to explain a concept using visuals and using a video, extremely, extremely important. So use that tool. The other things that I like to just recommend, especially if you're using a Mac is learn what virtual desktops are. Make sure that you have more than one virtual desktop opened up at any given time so you can have cleaner environments and move around faster. I have a tool called Spectacle, which allows me to do window management. So if I'm trying to open up a terminal and put it on one side, or I'm trying to open up another thing, and put it on the other side, Spectacle is a great tool that allows me to do window management. You can also use an app called Magnet. Other than that, I'm going to keep going forever. So I'm just going to stop. I hope that this video was valuable for you. If it was, make sure to just drop it in the comment. And let me know what was your number one biggest takeaway or if you found it valuable. And if you did, what was something that you found valuable? What did you take out of it? What are you going to be using? What does your new setup look like? I'm so excited to hear all about it. I love your beautiful face. Again, smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. 
subscribe to the channel because we want to help over 5,000 developers get professional jobs in the year of 2021. And I want you to be a part of that journey. And I want you to be one of those developers that also gets a job. With that said, this is your boy, Kazi. I love your beautiful face. And I will see you in the next video.